Welcome to Statics. Units of measurement and significant figures. There are four units of measurement that are used, primarily three in statics, length, mass, and force. The fourth one, time, will be used primarily in dynamics. In this course, we'll be working with both the metric and U.S. customary units. These are both commonly used. Throughout most of the world, the metric system is used, and the English system is used primarily in the U.S. For each unit of measurement, we need to understand the appropriate system's counterpart. There will also be prefixes that you will see and be expected to know. For example, you will see kilometers in addition to meters. There are two units I'll call special attention to. One is the slug in the U.S. customary system. There really is no mass unit in this system, so the slug is a derived unit. Also, in the international system, there is no true force unit. Force is derived based on kilograms, meters, and seconds. We'll see how this is done. Let's first look at the SI system, and particularly how the force unit is derived. Let's begin with the simple equation weight equals mass times the gravitational constant g. In the metric system, g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. If we take a mass of 1 kilogram and multiply it by g, we get a value of 9.81 kilogram meters per second squared, which is kind of an awkward unit to use. So for this reason, a newton was defined. 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. So the force of 1 kilogram multiplied by Earth's gravitational constant is 9.81 newtons. In other words, if we have a body of mass, and that mass is 1 kilogram, it has a weight of 9.81 newtons. Something to note when working with the metric system is the prefixes that are available. The most common ones that we will use in statics are capital M for mega and lowercase k for kilo. These prefixes represent powers of 10 to the 6th and 10 to the 3rd, respectively. You see that the other prefixes, giga, milla, micro, nano, are all multiples of 10 to the third power. Next, let's review the U.S. customary system, and in particular, the mass unit slug. Going back to the equation weight equals mass times gravity, we can derive the equation mass equals weight divided by gravity by dividing both sides by g. The gravitational constant g in U.S. customary units is 32.2 feet per second squared. If we begin with a weight of 32.2 pounds and input it and the gravitation constant into our equation for mass, we get 1 pound second squared per foot. That's a fairly awkward unit. So it has been defined as a slug. 1 pound second squared per foot. So, by substitution, the answer to the problem we just did is one slug. What does that mean? If I have an object that weighs 32.2 pounds on Earth, it has a mass of one slug. Significant digits are also important in engineering. Garth Miller says, Engineering is the careful art of approximation. The key is knowing how many digits to include and how to perform your calculations so you don't lose accuracy. The calculators and computers that you will likely be using in your calculations will give you anywhere from 7 to 15 digits of accuracy, way more than is really practical in an engineering problem. The key is to keep all the available digits in your intermediate calculations in your calculator, and then only round once on your final answer. If you round prematurely, you may distort your answer by several percent, and the answer becomes unacceptable. On homework assignments, you will typically be asked to report your answers in three or four significant digits. You can see some examples of values with three significant digits listed here. What is the purpose for not putting more significant digits on final answers? There are at least two reasons. First is for convenience. Writing down all the digits that your calculator gives you would be very tedious. The second reason is based on reality. Writing more than three or four significant digits suggests a level of precision that is unlikely to be realistic in most engineering situations. 
The world is complicated, and we typically simplify problems or make simplifying assumptions to make them feasible to solve. Assuming high levels of precision on problems that have been simplified just doesn't make much sense. Having excessive amounts of significant figures in your calculations or written work will certainly make you look like an amateur in your future job.